Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at the Windows 10 Action Center. This is basically the replacement for the charm bars, which are in Windows 8 and 8.1. So you'll see if we go to the top right corner of the screen, we no longer get the charm bars appearing. Instead, we have this little sort of speech bubble icon down the bottom here. When we mouse over it, it says no new notifications. But if we click on this, this brings up the Action Center. Um, there's sort of two sections to the Action Center. At the top we have notifications here and towards the bottom we have a bunch of shortcuts to various things you might want to interact with quickly on your system. Um, the notifications here we can see we have one from Mail which is telling us we have a new email which I've sent myself. Uh, it will also show Skype notifications if you receive messages on Skype. Uh, Mail is using the built-in Mail application here, but no doubt other applications like Outlook will support this in time. We can also see here, now if I plug in a USB stick, it's telling us I haven't ejected this properly. So we get a notification appears for that as well as appearing on the screen. Um, if we, there we go, we can see plugging it in again we get our notification here and then it is in the action center as well so if we miss it we can get it back up by viewing it in the action center rather than it just disappearing forever we can clear those messages out of the action center as we don't want to know anything more on those for now the buttons down the bottom we can collapse that to only show the four main buttons here or we can expand it to see the full range of options um, so first of all we have tablet mode. This switches Windows 10 into its tablet view. So we see we get the full screen start menu with the live tiles and if we select any of the applications on the system they even go into something like Notepad. It acts as a full screen application and if we minimize it it takes us back to the tablet interface. If we leave tablet mode we get our traditional start menu back and we can see notepad is still running but now we can window it so that's really nice feature for if you've got a convertible system like the asus transformer book t100 or a one of the lenovo yoga systems being able to switch between those two interfaces means windows 10 makes a lot more sense of those kind of devices next up we have the connect button um, this is for connecting to wireless display modules and wireless audio devices. So I've done a video looking at this with my Miracast device. I will put an annotation in here so we can go and take a look at that video if you're interested in working with Miracast and other devices such as this in Windows 10. The note option then brings up OneNote, which is a nice note-taking tool. Traditionally, it's been part of um, Office, but certainly in this installation of Windows 10 Pro, it's included out of the box, even without Office being installed, so that's a nice addition. Um, we can also, with some of these we have the option of right clicking and we can go to the settings so we can make adjustments say how tablet mode works uh, or some of the other areas the all settings bit simply brings up the sort of main control panel for windows 10 the traditional control panel is also available but a lot of the options have moved to this new modern ui style interface again i'll be covering sort of how to use this in another video and I'll put an annotation here if you would like to link through to that to find out more. Next up we have the battery saver option. Screen brightness has been kept at 100% we can still adjust that separately but battery saver has been turned on. Uh, again if we right click this and go into the settings we can see battery saver settings so how to automatically turn it on. This is basically just to um, save power with your system when you're running it on the battery um, quite a common feature now on phones as well nice to see it being put in as a single click rather than having to mess about with power profiles VPN has slightly weird level of prominence in here um, by clicking this 
we can, in this case, because I have no VPN connection set up, we can, it just takes us into adding one. Or if you have some set up, then it will quickly go through to use those. Um, quite strange putting it into sort of the main icons section because certainly home users, relatively few people will use VPN. Uh, it's more of a business feature. Um, we also have Bluetooth. Uh, so if we select this button, we simply turn Bluetooth on or off. If we right click it and say go to settings, then we can manage our Bluetooth devices. The screen brightness option here changes the screen brightness in 25% increments. Obviously, because I'm coming through to a capture card, you won't really be seeing any change here, but it's affecting the brightness on the laptop that I'm running on at the same time. And again, if we say go to settings, we get to have a look at the se settings for the monitor. We also have a button here for the wireless. Again, this just turns the wireless on or off. But if we say go to settings, then we get more settings on our wireless, so managing the networks around us. Um, you also have the wireless button here if you want to just quickly connect to a network. Then we have quiet hours. Now quiet hours, so we can see, as before, if we plug in our USB device, we get a notification. If I now enable quiet hours and clear the action center there, now this should suppress the notifications. So rather than getting pop-ups on the screen, we can see there are the two notifications here for the USB device, but we did not get these appearing on the screen. If we disable this again, unplug the device, plug the USB stick back in, and we get the on-screen notifications. So that simply suppresses the on-screen notifications which and leaves them just to appear in Action Center. The Location button turns on and off location services. And again, if we go to Settings, we can tweak those more precisely to change which apps are allowed to use them but that acts just as a sort of global on and off. And the airplane button, which disables Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, pressing it again, turns them both back on in a couple of seconds. There we go. And again, we have a go to settings option, which just takes us to sort of the global airplane mode. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out my channel for more Windows 10 guides and if you want to stay in touch with what we're doing hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.